Hello, digital world. It's DataViz Bob here. And I'm going to give you a quick review of, or a very quick and convenient comparison of scatter plots and parallel coordinates. This video is dedicated to Katie Langford, who is studying hard theoretically for her DataViz exam. And she asked me about this. Um, so I have behind me a parallel coordinates visualization and if you don't know what that is you can check out the previous video the quick and convenient introduction to parallel coordinates and when you start watching that video it's gonna tell you to finish watching this video first no just kidding Anyway, you can watch that video to find out how I made this, this visualization. So, <clears throat> what kind of insight can we gain from this kind of visualization? Before I say that, let me just say what the, the data is here. So, this is data from a spreadsheet about cars, right? And cars have different properties like miles per gallon, cylinders, horsepower, weight, acceleration, year, and origin, for example. And they have other properties too, but these are just some sample properties of cars, some sample attributes. And each car attribute gets its own axis in the parallel coordinates. So here's an axis for the ID of the car, the miles per gallon, the number of cylinders, the horsepower, weight, acceleration, year, and origin. And each car is represented by a polyline. So an individual car is rep represented by a polyline. So here's car zero, right? It has a relatively low number of miles per, ga per gallon. It has eight cylinders. It has a relatively high horsepower, high weight, um, high acceleration. It was made in 1980, and it comes from the U.S. <clears throat> So that's just, that's what the, the, that's a summary of what the actual data is and what we're visualizing. Now, what kind of insight can we gain into, the, by this visualization? Well, we can, we gain insight by looking at the relationships between dimensions or variants. In this case, it's all about the, the dimensions of the car. So, for example, <clears throat> I can see from this visualization that there's roughly an indirect relationship between miles per gallon and number of cylinders. That is, as the number of, as the miles per gallon increases, the number of cylinders generally decreases, and vice versa. As the number of cylinders increases, the miles per gallon or the fuel efficiency of the, of the car decreases. Right, and we can make observations about a number of dimensions, right? We can make, for example, there's a roughly direct relationship between horsepower and weight. As the horsepower increases, the weight of the car also increases, and so on. Uh, you might wonder, for example, well, how can you make observations about dimensions that aren't neighbors in the visualization? <clears throat> well, uh, usually this is implemented in software, so there are a number of programs, freely available programs, that implement the parallel coordinates visualization in software. One option is to move, the, change the order of the axes, so move one axis next to another, right, to, to compare the, the two attributes. Another, another option is called brushing. I'm going to simulate brushing, and that's when you select um, some piece of, the, of an axis, and then the lines encompassed by that selection are highlighted. So I'm going to simulate a very high-tech brushing, right? So imagine the user just wants to see, oh, where does this car come from? Where does car zero come from? So they click on that, on that range, and then 
the line that the polyline that corresponds to that is highlighted in some color. In this case, the color is blue. Right? We find out, oh, by clicking on this point or this range, we find out that that car comes from the U.S. Right? And it's a gas guzzler. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, is it possible to to visualize this with scatter plots, the same data? The answer is yes. <clears throat> you can visualize the same data with scatter plots, and I'm going to try to demonstrate that right now. <clears throat> so you can take any two axes and just put them on a, put them on an old fashioned scatter plot. Scatter plots are also called Cartesian plots. So we can take an axis, for example, car ID, and <clears throat> we can draw it like this. And then we have from zero to five, say one, you know, one, two, three, four, five. And then we can take the miles per gallon axis and draw it here, for example. This is not the only correct solution. So this is this is miles per gallon, and this is car ID. So we can take car ID zero, which in this case is down here. Right, it might make more sense to plot it, you know, that way. And then it has a low number of miles per gallon. So we go down, down, down here, and it has a low number of miles a gallon. So it would correspond to a point on this particular scatter plot down there. Here we have car ID number one. And then it has a very high miles per gallon. Right, so for this this point corresponds to here, for example, and then we have two, which we will go up to the axis, maybe that's near the middle, and that also has a very high miles per gallon. So it's up here, and then we have, and then so on. Car ID here has a low number of miles per gallon, but higher than the previous one, so it would be roughly here. These are just estimates by car number five, is somewhere in the middle, right? So car number four, excuse me. One, two, three, four, five. No, it is not number five, right? So it has a some miles per gallon right in the middle, right? And then finally car number five, which has a slightly higher miles per gallon. We'll just plot it right over there, right? So it's a roughly inverse relationship now that's only two that's only two variates so, so to get all all of the all of the relationships we need multiple scatter plots or we need a scatter plot matrix right so a scatter plot matrix so then in a scatter plot matrix we would repeat for example the car id axis And then we would plot that against miles per gallon. I'm sorry, cylinders. Right? And we would do the same thing again for the next combination. So car ID and horsepower. And we would end up, if we did this for every combination, we would end up with a matrix or a scatter plot matrix of every combination of these, these two variables. So here we can have all the car IDs along one row. The next row in the matrix going down would be miles per gallon. So all the combinations of miles per gallon with car ID, cylinders, horsepower, weight, accelerometer, until we have 
a complete matrix of all the combinations. So it is possible to represent the same information in the parallel coordinates as with a scatter plot matrix. Now, uh, advantages and disadvantages of parallel coordinates versus scatter plots. So it, the advantages of the of the the scatter plot or the Cartesian coordinate is that it's intuitive, right? So people see this and they understand it right away. Um, a disadvantage is that it's not very scalable. So to represent this same information with a scatter plot matrix is cumbersome, right? And the, as the number of dimensions increases, it becomes more and more difficult and it doesn't scale very easily, right? Uh, the advantages of the parallel coordinates is it's, it's specifically specifically for high dimensional data. Um, one disadvantage of the parallel coordinates is that it, it's it's susceptible to overplotting. So, since every data sample is represented by a polyline, as soon as we get up to a few thousand uh, polylines, it the whole thing starts to get overplotted, and there are a number of ways to handle that. This, the the scatter plot is a little bit less susceptible to overplotting since every point, it, every every data sample is represented by at one point. However, ultimately, all the visualizations that use a one-to-one -one ratio between data sample and visual primitive are subject to overplotting. And there are a number of ways to address that as well. So that is a quick and convenient comparison of parallel coordinates and scatter plots or Cartesian coordinates. Um, I remember one of my favorite memories is actually going to uh, Cambridge University in August of 2011 to see an invited talk given by Alfred Inselberg um, on parallel coordinates. Uh, the invitation came from Timos Kaporos. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Thank you, Timos, for, for organizing that. Um, by the way, this is, a, this is a copy of Alfred's book on parallel coordinates. It's, um, it's not exactly what I would call leisure reading. <laughs> um, if you have questions or comments or suggestions for improvements, yes, there are probably, a, I probably made a mistake or two. Let me know. Um, thanks for watching.